This is The Sim Pit. I'm your host, Sean Cole, but the real star today's show is a modification for the Fanatic Club Sport pedals that goes by the name Racecore 24. Now, before I get to that, how do you know you've made it big in the sim racing world? When people start making modifications for your products, meaning that there are enough of them in circulation and enough people are happy enough with them that people are going to put even more money into them to make them better. And that takes us to today's product, the Racecore 24. And this mod or upgrade to the Fanatic Club Sport pedals is an electronic box that upgrades the stock electronics of the Fanatic pedals, specifically the brake pedal. The Racecore 24 brake mod comes in three parts. You've got the electronic box itself, a USB wire that goes between the box and the computer, and a steel rod that you can choose to use or not to use, and we'll get to that later. But what does this little tiny box actually do? If you go to the Fanatic website, you'll see the Fanatic Club Sport brakes have a load cell brake pedal with 12-bit or 4,096 points of resolution. So this means if we take the total amount of pedal travel, we can divide that up by 4,096 steps of resolution, and that is how much signal is being read by the game, essentially. When you use the Racecore 24, it boosts this signal to over to 24-bit, which is over 8 million points of resolution in that same amount of travel, and it makes it that much smoother, that much more accurate, and that much more faster. More faster? That much faster. Now if you go to the website for Racecore 24, this is a new product. There are like no details there. I've talked with Tor Peterson, the maker of the product. He has talked to me extensively about what it does, how it works, how to do the installation, what the steel rod does, how to utilize that, and all of those things. If you're interested in this, you can go to the website. But you'll find more details in this video than you will at that website, and hopefully we cover everything here in this video. Now, the product is $199, and as I mentioned, it comes with the box, it comes with the cable, it also comes with a steel rod. So what does the steel rod do? This steel rod actually replaces the foam or the urethane bushings that are within the Club Sport brake pedal. Those bushings, they actually compress and depending on how hard or soft they are, it'll affect how quickly the pedal movement transfers to the load cell. With this, it's locked out one to one like a Formula One pedal and there is almost no movement at all on the pedal. Now I'm going to talk more about that later when we get down to driving. But for testing, I did try it out both with that steel rod and also with the electronics box. This speeds up the signal, makes it more accurate, and it's going to play a big role on the pedals with or without the steel rod. That's a secondary opinion and something I want to cover completely separately. So at first I did try it out with just the electronic box. The installation of the Racecore 24 electronic box is very simple and can be done without any tools. We start by flipping over the Club Sport pedals and taking a look at the stock board for the pedals where everything plugs in. Then we carefully remove the plug for the brake pedal, the middle one, and only this wire and plug. This wire then plugs into the Racecore 24 box and then the box plugs into the computer via the USB wire. At this point, the pedals are taking up two USBs on the computer, one for the Club Sports and one for the Racecore 24 brake. And since we're on the topic of installation, I'll go ahead and cover the installation of the steel rod as well, even though we'll separate them for our driving when we talk about them or break them down. This is also a very easy installation. I only needed two tools, one for the Allen wrench for the set pin for where the pedal rod attaches to the pedal arm. We loosen the Allen screw and then we can push the bar out of the joint through the pedal arm. And then I used a wrench to remove the shaker motor, being careful not to tug or pinch the wire that it's connected with. I could then swing the pedal rod and load cell assembly upward and unscrew the preload assembly. Inside of this pre-assembly are the soft bushings that are supplied with the pedals. We want to pull them out and place the steel bar in and then re-screw the preload assembly until it touches the steel rod inside gently. We can then rotate the assembly back into position behind the pedal arm and slide the steel bar back into the joint and re-tighten the set screw. Then replace the shaker motor and its hardware and we are all set. 
And then comes the software side of things, and you'll do that at the Racecore 24 website. And I gotta tell you, there's not a lot to do there. In fact, there's three things you can do. Register for the site, purchase the Racecore 24, and download the software, which is what you're gonna wanna do. My Windows system saw the program as a possible threat, so I had to give extra permissions to let it install, but after that, it was all pretty straightforward, and it was a self-installing program. After you've installed the program and once you've opened the Racecore 24 software, one of the first things you're going to want to do is actually calibrate your new brake pedal. And then this includes if you make any changes to your brake pedal, like going to the steel rod or any compression changes or urethane changes, you're going to always want to recalibrate. And you do this by first selecting the brake in that lower menu. Once you've done this, you can hit the calibrate button. You can set the minimum or your foot off the brake by pressing the button for minimum and waiting for 45 seconds with your foot off the brake as it sets the zero point. You can also override the minimum by adding a value. You can see the number jumping around. That is just how sensitive this brake is. And then finally, you need to calibrate the full pressure point. To do this, you click on the maximum and then within five seconds, Press the brake pedal to full once. Now the Racecore 24 brake mod is fully installed and ready for in-game mapping and in-game usage. And I do want to move on to that, but I do think of mapping as part of the installation process. So I want to cover a few things before I talk about actually on track with this brake. I started off with Assetto Corsa and everything was as business as usual. I went to the mapping controls page and then I reset the brake and it registered as the race core brake. Bam, it was that easy. But when I got to iRacing, I did run into a little trouble. In the beginning, I showed you how sensitive this brake, the numbers jumping around when we were talking about that minimum calibration. Well, on iRacing, it sees those numbers jumping around. When I went to go to the calibration process, it would see the throttle. It would see the brake, but when I went to go hit the clutch, it would still see that brake jumping around and it would really confuse it and it would see conflicting controls. That's when that minimum setting came into play. What I did, I found that number jumping around. I looked for the highest number that I saw while it was jumping around when I was off the brake and I used that number and then I went back to recalibrating. And in fact, I cheated a little bit. I even pulled up on the brake pedal during calibration just to make sure it wasn't seeing any pressing of the pedal whatsoever. That solved the problem and I was underway. And now let's get down to driving it on track. I did start with the soft setting, the urethane, not using the steel rod. This means I am using either the stock amount of travel with no preload or the dial set to zero. The brake pedal moves and on the level of feeling is identical at this point. All that has changed is the speed and accuracy of the pedal compared to before. Because of this, the device could go unnoticed by some drivers. But to those who are very sensitive to their controls, there is a noticeable or measurable difference. But again, for some, it may go unnoticed. So to really show off what's going on, I recorded some of my driving and we can look at the difference at the same part of the track with and without the Racecore 24. When we compare the movement of the pedal, it is hard to see it first. But when we watch it over and over again, you can see smoother application of the brake. This is actually playing a slight role in handling by minimizing excessive weight transfer. When looking at the actual controls and comparing, it is the brake release that is easiest to detect. This brake pedal now releases much faster than before. And what does this actually mean? Well, under braking, it is when we're actually transferring all of the weight of the car to the front end. This usually causes understeer. It's the moment of release that the car settles back and gives us traction onto all four wheels. This timing, timing that release point, can actually be used to our advantage because it allows the car to free up and turn for apex. This was very noticeable to me and required a few laps to master the timing of and then to put it to my advantage. The speed and accuracy was right there in plain sight, but could it really be felt by the average sim racer? 
So I started off with the stock resistance and the pedal for a reason. This allowed me to really test the speed and accuracy of the box on its own because that's the way I had the pedal set up. If I went to the steel rod, it would then change the feeling of the pedal and that was gonna be something entirely different. So that's what I moved on to next and putting the steel rod on really changes things a ton. First of all, the travel. When you first step on the brake, you would think something was broken. The pedal does not seem to move, but it actually does just very, very slightly. With the steel bar installed, the only movement is the flex of the load cell. And in this case, we are talking about less than a half an inch, maybe even a quarter. So when we had the pedal at a stock travel of nearly three inches, you're dividing that by over eight million points of resolution. When we add the steel bar, now we're talking that quarter to a half an inch of movement still divided by over 8 million points of resolution. And to be honest, that kind of blows my mind that you can squeeze that many points into that small a space, but that's exactly what the Racecore 24 does. And it did take some getting used to for sure. The brake pedal was very stiff. The brake pressure is now instantly being applied to the load cell and there is no buffer of the elastomer bushings and the very moment you even rest your foot on the brake, it is being applied ever so slightly. When I calibrated the pedal, I had pressed rather hard on it. This means to achieve full braking, I had to really press hard. In fact, this worked out nice because it gave me a good amount of pressure to work with and then I had to really dig in to get full braking. This was preventing unnecessary brake lockup. Even in one of the hardest cars, the Porsche GT3 and I racing, I was able to drive without locking up the brakes excessively. I could have also not pressed as hard on the brake pedal during calibration, and then I wouldn't have to press as hard during the game either. That's totally up to you, but working with an extra stiff extra hard pressure actually worked to my advantage when I was looking for that effect. I found with the extra hard brake pedal that gentle braking could be done with just minimal pressure and medium level braking took a little bit more but then you had to consciously press hard when wanting maximum braking. I found that my wheel lockup was minimized and between the speed and the very small amounts of pressure changes I could easily modulate that braking all the way to apex through straight line braking, predictable trail braking, and final closing speed to apex. The most critical parts of racing and exactly what the Racecore 24 was designed for. So when it came down to testing these pedals, I actually used a little bit of logic when it came down to which pedal set I used for which scenario. When it came to Formula One or the steel rod version, I definitely wanted to use the standard V3s. Number one, most Formula One cars come with floor mounted pedals, so that made sense. Number two, it doesn't come with the damper kit, which sort of defeats the point of doing the steel rod and the super fast electronics. Now, on the inverted V3s, it actually made total sense to test these in GT scenario. So I left it with more travel like you would in a GT car and didn't even bother with the steel rod or the Formula One style because it doesn't match this set of pedals. But regardless, for a little tiny box, for a little steel rod, either way, it made a huge difference in the way either of these pedals acted on track just blew me away. But to really talk about what the differences are, let's break it down with the good, the not so good, and the bottom line, starting off with the good, and that's that it is faster. It's more precise. It's more accurate. More predictable. Allows for incredible trail braking. Allows for slight scrub braking without causing excessive push or understeer. Noticeably quicker release of the brake and that affects steering. And with the steel bar, you are really measuring pressure versus travel more than any other pedal I've ever felt. And now on to the not so good. It's very expensive. At $199, you're talking two-thirds of the price of the pedals. Takes another USB. Now you have two devices just for your pedals. Careful how you leave your foot on the brake because it just might be measuring. Very little information or instruction at their website. Hopefully this is something they'll fix in the near future. 
And now on to the bottom line. Precision is one of the most sought after things in racing. The tighter our tolerance is, the better our equipment or components can work together. The more predictable our machines, this wins more races. This is true in real life racing and it's also true in sim racing. But it also all goes hand in hand. You put all these tools in, this, in the hands of an amateur driver and they're not going to get the same benefits as a super pro or really talented driver. And this is sometimes true with our equipment in sim racing as well. I really feel the same way about the Racecore 24 brake mod. Aliens will immediately recognize the difference, and amateurs wouldn't necessarily feel a difference, but it's still happening and working to their advantage, even though they might not know it. I mean, what is all of this added resolution, 4096, 8 million steps, what does it really mean? Well, let's overly simplify it. Let's imagine this full throw of this brake pedal was only three steps. Well, you'd know that very well. That would be 33% one step, then you'd have 66%, and then you'd have full application. And it would be very hard to do accurate braking with only three steps. Now, 4,096 is a lot of steps in that range of motion, but you can still imagine 4,096 points, and it's going to give you that stepped kind of feeling, just a lot of them. In the case of 8 million, 8.3 million steps of resolution. I defy any magnifying lens even to see the difference between the little dots between that much travel, and that is a big difference. This means more accuracy and smoother application of the brakes. It does work. Now let's talk about the steel bar, and I'm just going to call this the Formula One brake mod. This is hands down the stiffest pedal I have ever touched with my foot and depending on what you expect out of a brake pedal, that could be bad. But if you're trying to emulate a real F1 brake, this is how I would imagine it would feel. It's fast, it's strong, and it's very easy to modulate the power. It offers the fastest brake you will ever use, both on pushing and on release. It changes the way the car drives, and it changes the way you drive the car, and in the hands of talented drivers, probably at an advantage. But the one looming question is the who. Who will be interested in this kind of upgrade or advantage? Who will be able to feel the differences of an upgrade or an advantage like this? And who is willing to spend $200 to upgrade a $300 set of pedals? So I hope you've enjoyed this review of the Racecore 24 brake mod, and even if this review isn't specifically for you, I think we can all see that Fnatic has hit a new stride when you got outside companies making products to make your products better. This is The Sim Pit, I'm Sean Cole, and I'll see you on the track.